Hello and welcome to My Mom's Basement presented by Barstool Sports. I am your host, Ravi Fox, and for the first time ever in person, me and Clem are here with Jose Youngs, a New Yorker now. New, oh, don't. <laughs> hey, that's I like that. Ne- I might New live Englander. in New York, but I will never be in He's New York. He's a New Englander, there for real, go. but... Uh, he, the youngsters Jose. are outside. Oh, they're <laughs> outside. They're, <laughs> it's a crowd outside, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, you, you had me go for a minute. Yeah, we said we would do this when Jose, of course, announced he was moving to New York on the show, and uh, here we are. We've done it. You're in town for the Knicks game. Bing bong. Hopefully by the time that this is out, you know, the Knicks have won and moved on. I don't want to do any more streams. Just do look. Stream tonight. Here, you can't see it on the thing, but I'm wearing my Knicks shirt today. Oh, look at Bing Bob. He's Bing Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. He's Celtics a Suns fan. fan. Celtics fan. Baby. Celtics fan. I thought you are a Suns fan. Well, I was born like, all right. I love the Suns because I lived about five minute walk from them. Okay. Grew up diehard Celtics fan. Makes sense. Um, but if the Suns, I they were always play, like same as the Diamondbacks and the Cardinals. Like you, I lived there for sixteen years. You got kind of support. Yeah. Years. Shit. Eighteen years in Rhode Island, sixteen in Phoenix, and then like a little bit in LA. No one's gonna be like, oh, you can't be a Suns fan, no. sir. Like that's just one of those teams. So the, like the year I moved there, they still had Nash and Sean Marion. Oh, that's a funny there. team. And John Rich just became a Diamondbacks fan because he's like, we don't have any Diamondbacks. Fans. They, <laughs> offer, they call themselves here's, snakes. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's like when, when I went to tour ASU uh, was when the All Star game was in Phoenix and Shaq was on the Suns. Oh, oh that's wow. how long ago yeah. was down there. <laughs> um, but we're not here to talk basketball today. Today we're here to talk X Men '97 yet again. Oh my God, what a show! The finale has begun. Tolerance is extinction. Part one, we'll get part two next week, and then the final part the week after, and that'll conclude season one. Season two is allegedly, as we've talked about, kind of in the can. Like, they're animating it still, but I think the voice work and the writing is pretty much done. So that's good. We'll probably get that at some point in 2025. So we've gone, like, every few episodes, we're like, so what do you think about it so far? And it usually is the same answer. Jose, are we going to get, like, the deep breathing when I talk about (laughs) you? I didn't realize you were an X-Men guy until we had you on a couple months ago. Like, how is, I mean, this is the guy who, like... Yeah, what are your thoughts? I we've, really, we've told the viewers. I really enjoy it. It's, it was, I ran into Robbie at UFC 300, and we were covering a power slap event. Yep. And <laughs> we were killing time, and we literally just talked about comic books for, like, an hour, as yeah. we do when we're in the same room. And X-Men lore is probably the most complicated in all of Marvel. Like, it's really hard to keep up. Like, I love the X-Men. You love the X-Men. There are people who have well like they can like the back of their hands like i am not that deep like, like there's every like, team right every like faction ex- every subset extinction ecstatic like x-force like excalibur like there was x-men on the west coast there's x-men on the east coast but i really enjoy this because it's kind of streamlining it mm-hmm. and x-men opposed to any other like marvel property in the comic books was that was the timeline just moved forward and people aged, things happened, like people had babies, and like they weren't, Peter Parker wasn't a teenager for 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> like, so that's what I enjoyed, and I think that's what the show is doing. Like, they are taking John Byrne's baby, where, which he wrote for like decades, and are translating it beautifully, while also adding a little bit of sprinkles in people that maybe didn't read it then. Yeah. Like, the, like the Madeline Pryor yeah, that yeah. showed up when she was like the Goblin Queen. Yep. That's playing – that's happening now in the comic books. Like oh, she, really? She was the Goblin Queen, like, obviously decade uh, yeah. decades ago. But she's popped back into Spider-Man, actually, Ooh, right shit. now and kind of dealing with Ben Riley yeah. type situation. And, like, Mary Jane has superpowers, and it's, like, a whole thing. But, like, the <laughs> Goblin Queen, they fought, they beat her, and then, like, last month just came back. Wow. So it's a little sprinkle of, like, old and new while yeah. keeping it – while staying faithful. And also staying faithful to, like, the original cartoons. Even Very this so. week, yeah. we saw some cameos at the end from yeah. all other cartoons, like spoilers for this week's episode. Yep. And I'm sure you hear 7th Ave as, as well. <laughs> the the <laughs> fact that they built podcast studios with no soundproofing on the street is... <laughs> that's the Barstool difference. That's the baby. Barstool difference. Um, but we got Spider-Man 94, Love which it. is awesome. Like, mm-hmm. a little glimpse of him, a little Omega Red, a little... Was it Super Samurai in there Silver as well? Samurai. Silver yeah. Samurai in there. Um, I hope that by Tolerance's Extinction Part 3, 
we hear from Spider-Man. Maybe we get him interacting with the X-Men a little bit. I would love even maybe the Fantastic Four, Iron Man, yeah. as we talked about. It would be nice to have a mini – I don't, I don't want to call everything Endgame, but a mini team-up at the end. This actually leads me to a question I was going to ask at the end of the episode, but I'll ask Jose at the beginning. So I'm thinking about this, and we talked about it last week when Robbie's guy, the mutant-hating Captain America, <laughs> sure. clearly America's cop, America's <laughs> narc, as we were calling him. Like, I feel like it's like X-Men, like mutants, those superheroes, a lot of them are humans. Do we have, like, a superheroes are the team human and the mutants? The so X-Men it's funny you say that. So in the early... it's. It's actually a great transition I was going to bring up. <laughs> um, there was, like, I want to say like 2015, 2016, there was, I really enjoyed it. It was divisive at the time, but I had a blast with it. It was called AVX, Avengers vs. X-Men. Oh, yeah. Oh, and um, the writing is very over the top. And I'm <laughs> There was one it. of the first Marvel comics I ever bought. It's a lot of fun. Like, it, like it's done, it's over and done with, and it really did kind of set the tone. Like, this one we had, like, the Phoenix Five or whatever like that, where the Phoenix Force came back and was splintered into, like, five or six parts, and huh. it was, like, Cyclops, a mariner who is a mutant, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. like, well, sword, maybe the f- Colossus. Wasn't he one of the first mutants? Well, that's... Technically? If you read House of M, allegedly Jesus was a mutant. Oh, oh so yeah. that's like a whole. <laughs> that's <laughs> like AD. That's like a whole thing. But uh, there is a scene in that where Cyclops has kind of the scene in X Men ninety ninety seven where it, I think it's Rogue and Captain America are talking and yeah. she takes a shield and like hums it. Eats yeah. it. That it's not word for word, but there is one of those interactions with Captain America and Cyclops, uh, similar to like when Cyclops is being interviewed by that newswoman. He kind of yeah. snaps yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's like. You just be you because you look normal and this and that and it's like that happened in the comic books and the writing bums me out because Captain America would not like he would understand. That's right, he would understand. Clem, we had it's, this conversation. But I was like, same, come on. I, I said Chris Evans, Captain America, MCU Captain America. He's standing with the mutants for sure. Captain America should stand. You with can't the mutants, say that word, Robbie. <laughs> but at the same time, it is very reminiscent of uh, the Dark Knight Returns Superman, where Superman in any other avenue would side with justice and that's like what batman yeah. is dealing with but like when the president he tells you to do something captain america is at first and foremost on like american hero and a soldier and will listen to his this guy, person he preaches so it's both ways like well he's just trying to both. play people it is it is <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. captain america would all like also the writing that cyclops had in that issue is like this is right when cyclops kind of became like a little like angsty mm-hmm. and very reminiscent of like Anakin in episode three where it's like you can okay. kind of see him brooding a lot. Yeah, yeah. And then Captain America came in and was like, I'm like, no, Captain America wouldn't clearly side with Cyclops, but if the president's telling him to do it, what are you going to do? So I, I do remember this. This was It was 2012 AVX, mm. and I remember that because I was always, as I've mentioned, like just pretty much exclusively a Batman comics kid mm-hmm. growing up. Like I would venture out into other DC stuff somewhere if Batman appeared, but I was pretty much a Batman exclusive. Then I saw the Avengers movie after being right. an MCU fan through Phase 1, and this came out a month before the Avengers movie. Yeah. So I saw that movie, went well, to the comic book shop, and was like, oh, my God, they're fighting the X-Men. Right. I like the X-Men, and, and I bought that. I remember being pretty confused by it up it front. Is, but you, it's very difficult to jump into X-Men without yeah. kind of reading a little bit before. And I read nothing before it's, that. It's a lot yeah, because but, there's like – Rachel Summers all of a sudden looks like Jean Grey, but then Jean Grey also looks like Madeline Pryor. But then this person is the clone of this who traveled back in time, but is actually this person's half sister. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. It's very Game of Thrones esque. Where mm. if you haven't s- started from the beginning, it's hard to like focus on something. And we talked about the Game of Thrones esqueness of uh, X Men mm-hmm. when we were at UFC 300. Mm-hmm. You said. You don't even want them to do movies for X Men. You nope. would rather it be a TV show. A hundred thousand percent, and I would not be opposed if they just kept it animated. I mean, like at this point, with how good X Men ninety seven is, I agree. Someone tweeted like X Men ninety seven and Invincible show that we don't even need live action superhero adaptations anymore. Oh. I was like, all right, pump the brakes. <laughs> like, I do like the live action movies. I mean, someone said I, I saw someone I think on YouTube said it. They're like, maybe we just stick with the comics or the cartoons, and I'm like. They just can take so much more liberties, yeah. and mm-hmm. they can just advance stories so much easier. And I mean, honestly, just kind of like brush through shit, be like, "Oh, this is what happened." Yeah. And you see cable, ju- cable, like the whole cable story. Yeah. I read a million comic books, cable. I had no clue what the <laughs> fuck was going on. I've watched a couple cartoons, I'm like, "Oh, I kind of get it now." It's you know? uh, 
I think the I do agree with you that, do, that there does need to be live action movies yeah. for the big. I think it works perfectly for the Avengers because they Batman, can all be Superman. Indiv- yeah. indiv- they're all individuals that can then come, but X Men is just so complicated. Yeah, <laughs> it's so I and even an, a live action X Men would be a tough TV show. Because yeah. how do you go from Genosha to all of a sudden you're back at the X Mansion? You're all of a sudden back with like the Kree with up like in space, Jubilee like, and Sunspot at the mall, and like, like that episode was awesome the when they went master, back to the eight bit. The, the uh, love, Motendo, I, yeah. I cannot remember the guy that ran the that was controlling the game. It's gonna drive me crazy. Was it Mo, Mo, Mojo? Mojo, 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 Bingo? And there's awesome, awesome comic books with him. Oh it's, yeah. It's and every time he pops in, it's something like that. Like there was one where he made all the X Men like kids, and they, oh, he like shit. threw them into something. So every like Muppet time baby sh- versions, a hundred percent. Or that episode <laughs> like of Justice that. League when they all turn to kids. I don't remember that. Oh, I think it's I think it's Justice League Unlimited or whatever. People but, want that to come back now too. James Gunn actually had a good response to that though. He was like, I think X Men ninety seven is so great because it's not trying to be something you know just because of a trend. Yeah. He's like, if I brought back mm-hmm. Justice League just because X Men '97 is great, like I don't know if that translates. And if anyone's watching Crisis on Infinite Earth, there, which is like the DC's yeah. current thing, it's not great. But <laughs> uh, they had a little s- sneak preview of uh, Mark Hamill and uh, Kevin, Kevin Conroy. Conroy's it's gonna Batman. be their last time together, I, I think. Right? Yeah. yeah. Last thing they recorded. And it I looks like great. The animation great. looks like the the original <sighs> Batman the animated series too. People were excited they didn't go with the new Batman. Adventures yeah. designs because they usually do nowadays, and I just wish the movie was better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think about this X Men? They do a TV show and it's like a high quality. It's the bo- like I know you haven't seen the boys yet, but it's something that people like. They do it good, please God. And then every four years or so, we have a X-Men, like a the temple movie. movie. We're all coming That'd together, be cool. and we almost know what comics it's going to take off of, and that's kind of like a, the event, and then we roll back. The X Men could pull that off right. for sure. It would be very reminiscent of. Like, if they did a, a lot of, cause like, like, the Dark Phoenix Saga had, like, so much stuff going into it. And then the singular issue where Jean Grey dies in the Dark Phoenix Saga is one of the greatest Marvel comic books of all time. Like, single floppies. Yeah. That could be a movie. Just yeah. leading yeah. up to that. Or the Days of Future Past comic book. Yep. Same thing. Like, have all these storylines converge into one movie. That would be that would be perfect. I think that's how you handle. I think the X-Men. we just fixed the MCU. I think we. I was gonna say, knock on them. wood, kind of what they're doing with Star Wars right now. Like, if yeah, you took true. Star Wars's current plan with the Mandalorian, Ahsoka, what if you factioned off a couple members of the X Men? Do not one show, but maybe a couple shows focusing on them, and then you do that possible heir to the Empire, Mandalorian, and Grogu, whatever, in theaters. And it kind of makes sense. Like, you think of the X-Men comic books, you have the little faces on type. Like, all right, this episode we're getting Storm and Nightcrawler. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work with the movie. You kind of have to have those guys or else their presence. Dude, steal, with the, the reviews and the ratings of 97, I wouldn't be surprised if after season two, like, they got a movie in theaters like Spider-Verse level. I, I wouldn't hate it. It's also, what is Deadpool going to be? Is that, uh, you know, it, does it tie in? that could be, or... like, the end game for the Fox franchises in general. Yeah. So I guess that could be... And they do have a line in this episode where they were like, uh, Morph is like, ah, oh, another universe where Wolverine is the last <laughs> X-Men surviving. And I was like, pretty sure they're doing that in Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> pretty sure he's roasting that movie a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's get into this episode. It begins with a cool conversation between Scott and Jean talking about their son. Jean, obviously not like Jean's son, but kind of she's the mom that stepped up. And Cable <laughs> was uh, separated from Bishop seemingly as soon as they went into the time stream. Something like that. Boom. Right off, they went away. Scott's like, ah, oh, fuck. I didn't ask Professor X how to be a good dad. Um, and I sent my son off to a better future. He had to run back and figure that out. Then Bastion, on the other end, got funding for his Prime Sentinel program, post Genosha and Cable's timeline. Um, and Prime Sentinels can reproduce... Cable's future involves, like, mutant slaves, utopia for humans. Bastion. Mm-hmm. We don't know a lot about Bastion. What yeah. are your thoughts on the character? He's, Do you like him? I really, yes, because he's always a thorn in the side that doesn't go away, but he's not overly used. Um, and when, so when he shows up, you know shit's about to go down. Like, yeah. he is a great, he's not Magneto, he's not Doctor Doom, he's not, like, any... Sinister Apocalypse, all the guys he's, you always hear. But about. he is, like... If, like, he is a great Loki-level 
villain. There you go. Like, yeah. Thanos would be another level, and he is a fantastic, like, transitional villain. Yeah. And the Sentinel Project is an awesome way to kick off. Like, I so I was... And it's a bummer because we talked about this before. Well, I'm like, I can't watch Marvel shows with my girlfriend. Yep. <laughs> You're like, so oh, like this is when, the, when they cut to this guy in the dark, I'm like, oh, it's Bastion. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, and, come on. But they don't tell you. Yeah. It's just a guy in the dark. And she's like, well, all right. <laughs> so if you like, I don't know how much you've been following, you know, outside of the X-Men or your sick brain, you might know it all. But they, he's been in every episode. Yeah, Even he's in the, in the background. Him, yeah. Or like, there's a picture where he's cut off, and they've had him. They've even had stuff. Did you see the um, intro? The Madeline Pryor, when she was in the episode, mm-hmm. we didn't know her hair wasn't in a ponytail. I know it. And then when they replaced it with Jean, Jean had the ponytail. It's like they have the little things. That it's like there. that. Is it true? Because I rewatched it, and it sort of looks like the before the Genosha bombing. There's the outline of the Watcher in the sky. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that is that. awesome. He's there for all like the big universe yeah. events. Love I it. like that they mentioned the, they like absolute points yeah, kind of too. Beast started talking about that and kind of in, like a Nexus event type thing. Mentioned Carmitage. Yep. Said Strange, which was like yeah. in a yeah, you yeah, know yeah. wink wink way, which was nice. It'd be cool to see him in a '90s. Was he in any of the yeah, '90s cartoons? I think he was in. I don't remember what show he was in, but he definitely he didn't have his. He might have had his own show. He had a movie for sure, but it was like a mid two thousands. Yeah, movie. I would like to see him mix it up with the X Men. That would be cool. And Cable thinks Bastion is like basically Master Mold. He's like made from Master yeah, Mold. Yeah, he's. In some I way. can't remember. It's Master Mold and Nimrod. And Nimrod. It's like yeah. Essences of those two, uh, and then he kind of popped up. And do you, do, what do you think about Nimrod? Because we were talking about him last week. He's we great. Like, funny name. You can't have Bastion without him, and he is very funny. Like, okay. I again, he there's like he's like a second tier villain. But he is a great – he can carry, like, a three-, four-issue arc. Yeah. And then once you're done, you can go bi- into, like, the big Magneto stuff. And is this – I know we're talking about Operation Zero Tolerance and stuff. Yeah. That's all pulled directly yeah. from comics, right? Yeah. And is oh, Bastion yeah. in the comics, like, oh, the yeah. leader of that in that way? Um, That I don't quite remember, but he's obviously heavily involved. Yeah. I don't know if he's, like, the ringleader, but he's very heavily involved. And skipping ahead in the episode, but – is like Doom and Zemo and like are they involved in the comics too? Um, that was know, a cool surprise was, to see them. So Zemo, when the Sentinels, so. I mean, pretty much any time there's like a big Sentinel thing, it kind of takes over. I don't know if it's, 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 it's specifically this operation. I can't quite remember, but there are several issues where the Sentinels will go out into the world, and you'll you will get these cameos of like because. Mutants live in Latveria. Yeah. Like I, yeah, yeah. I can vividly. There are panels I know of like Sentinels in Latveria and Doom being like, well, "Go away!" Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is happening now, I guess. Yeah. No mutants here. Um, when the X Men are watching the footage of Xavier on Shi'ar and they're like, "Look, he's he faked his death for mutant sympathy, and look, is the guy who killed him, you know, supposedly is turned up dead." What do you think the X Men are thinking? Because we didn't really get to see like they didn't have a conversation about that in the moment. But are they like? What the fuck, Charles? Did you abandon us, or do do they understand? All right, you went off with the Shi'ar, where they saved your life and stuff. I'm telling you, Bob. We've been saying it. We when we rewatched, what was it? First Class, and I'm like, Yo, Ooh. Professor X kind of like was kind of fucked up. Where like, he, he, it's kind of weird where he's like, Oh, you have mutation. You have like hazel eyes or something. <laughs> he's using it as a pickup line. And we're like, Does he use his mind power as like a fucking you know to like sway these girls? And then I'm like, Professor X might be kind of creepy. I think these X Men know him, and they're like, "He sold us out for a bunch of bird pussy, <laughs> alien bird pussy at that." So I think they kind of like they know they're not quite surprised. That's what Charles does. He's kind of a dog like that. Everyone yeah, has he their is like kind of vice, a dog. and that's Charles's vice. Is he like, kind of a dog in the comics? He's bo- bound to what is it, Le- Leand- Lelandra or whatever. He's his soul is bound to her forever. Oh, okay. Is that real? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. He's that's one of those guys. Like, the, I'm not taking the ring the off. The Dark Phoenix, the death of the, the Dark Phoenix saga when Jean Grey dies, um, it starts with the X-Men being teleported to that ship. And Lelandra, like, pleads with him. You're like, we have to kill Jean Grey. Or she's, because she's going to be the Phoenix. Yeah. And he's like, but my love, this and that. And then, you know, it's a whole thing. And he's kind of a freak. Like, we yeah. learned last episode, he's like, you'll we'll, like, we'll bark later. Yeah, like, oh, you'll get to bark He also, later. like, when he abandoned, because, like, he's he left the X-Men without telling them. Like, yeah. they think he's dead, but he's not. It's not the first time he's bailed on the X-Men. It leads directly into House of M. House of M. Oh, Th- shit. That is, that's a weird trait to have, to yeah. just Irish exit on the X-Men. You can't yeah. have the X-Men. It's X, 
Matt. Yeah, yeah, like, it's Matt. named after you, dude. <laughs> yeah, literally you got to change the letters, man. They're going to have to change the letters at the very least. Um, some of Sunspot's parents again. They suck. They suck. <sighs> they're the worst. They, they're not good. Um, we get more of them later, though. This was just a quick check-in to set up the gala later. Um, Nightcrawler. This guy, Nightcrawler. Oh, dude, so I was well so show. hyped for... There are... So, it is similar to... So, Nightcrawler with the... You'll, like, you'll both like this reference. Mm-hmm. Nightcrawler with the swords happens frequently in the comic books, but not every issue. Yeah. It is the equivalent of... Uh, Kurt Angle taking the straps off. <laughs> like, it's, it's so like, like oh, this what, is real. Remember when you remember down. that Kurt Angle when he put it back on just to just take to take it, it off. It off? <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. So when the swords fell, I went like, he's doing the thing, and then I, everyone, my girl was like, I, whatever. But it, that happens often, and there is very fun issues of when they go to the danger room, and they play, they like role play. So, like, all of a sudden, Kurt wants to be a pirate, and there's, like, a whole episode <laughs> issue of the X-Men just doing pirate things because he that. has his swords. I got very excited. <laughs> but he picked up three we swords. We love that he's a sword guy in this. Oh, yeah. That was the yeah. first thing we said about him when they brought him into the actual show. I'm a sword guy. Do you yeah. know this? Oh, yeah. I, I, I do have, know I have, uh, I have a Shout-out to Sam Lauderdale, Basic Boy of the Week. He bought me the um, – I, I found it on Etsy. It was the uh, Thundercat sword. And I was oh. like, I want this so bad. And just one day, he just Venmoed me money. He's like – Buy that sword. I was like, dude, no, no. He's like, I'm not taking it back. And I was like, well, <laughs> fuck. I'm, I'm basically. So I have a sword in my garage, and now I want more swords. I want now. I see Nightcrawler has three swords because he's in <laughs> yep. hell. And I'm like, I need to have. It's like a, I'm a snake guy. Some people are snake guys. I'm a sword guy. That's just how it is. And <laughs> that motherfucker. Like I was. It was funny because I, w- I was on like Reddit and all the people like, holy shit, it happened. Holy shit, it yeah. happened. I'm like, I can't look at this. And then after I watch it, I'm like, and every single person was just freaking out about the sword. Oh, I, was, I didn't realize it was a thing like that. I was. Very excited. <laughs> and beyond just being a badass, he's written very well in this Love show it. and this scene specifically. Mm-hmm. He's like humanizing Madeline and kind of also Cable in Jean Grey's mind. Yeah. Where he's yeah. telling her, blood is blood, family is a choice, let go of the past, simply be family. Talks about being given up by Mystique, little lore there and stuff. I love Kurt Wagner. I. Uh- I, I said it. He's cooking. He just cooks every cooking. episode. He's cooking the funeral. <laughs> yeah. He had every fucking gambit, gambling pun, just ready to go. And this one, he said, like, memories are echoes with emotion or something like Ooh. that. And I was like, ooh, like, Spitting. let it be known, yeah. Kurt. And I, that's why in the, in the movie, I'm telling you, there's a scene when we meet Nightcrawler. There was a scene where if you watch it again. Uh, Storm and Jean Grey play by two like stunning. They're just rubbing him. They're not <laughs> yeah, even putting yeah, yeah. on him. And I'd be like, I don't blame you. The guy just had fucking He's smooth. the riz, I'm as a... the kids say. Yeah. <laughs> Nightcrawler is routinely one of the better written characters. Yeah, I believe that he's probably, if you're a comic book writer, one of the more fun characters to write for because yeah. you don't, like, you don't have to make it sound so every day. He yeah. has that over the top Shakespearean yeah. dialogue a lot of the time. And Marvel, Marvel writers for whatever reason write foreign ca- heroes and villains exceptionally well, like Banshee, Nightcrawler, yeah. Magneto, Craven the Hunter. Uh, yeah. In regardless of IP Zemo? they're using. Zemo, Doom. Um, it's. I feel like they get to flex their non-American like voices in their head. You got and make it over the top. You got that a little in Genosha too, where you had like, yeah. the Irish bro come yeah. out. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like you're getting mutants literally from all over the world, and you don't see that. You well, really that, yeah. don't realize. You That's don't see that why anymore. it was the giant size X Men that introduced Wolverine to begin with um, was on Krakoa, I believe, which was the Living Island, and they oh, yeah. found mutants from all different. That's where you found Banshee from Ireland, Wolverine from Canada, Sunfire from Japan, uh, Apache from like the the plains of America, Storm from Africa. So you got every every it was the it was the X Men, but every hero was from a different country, and they all yeah, teamed up cool. to save the day. It's like the United Nations of X Men. Love that. Yeah. We awesome. also got a shout out Nightcrawler because he was always awesome in the video games. I always loved yeah. Nightcrawler. A Banff. You know, the, the he was <laughs> there in the uh, Banff and Thwip and Snicked are the three best. I don't know what like sound. Onomatopoeia, is it? Onomatopoeia, is that, yeah. Those yeah, are yeah, the yeah. those are the three best in all of comic book history. Yeah, I, I mean, what else could even be up there? Kapow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. good like a punch. Yeah. But those three, when you see Banff, Nightcrawler, Snake, yep. Wolverine, yeah. Flip, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Immediately, you know. Immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, Mr. Sinister's talking to Dr. Cooper, is it? The Something like that. Blonde woman? Yeah, whatever. You know what? I, I, I read a bunch of people who were like, what's her name again? And it's yeah. like, she's it's important. Dr. And I think we're I We're going to call her Dr. Speak. Cooper if that's not is her name. Is she good? Is she bad? Yeah, we're just going to call her Dr. Cooper. Um, no, we'll call her Mrs. Cooper. Well, Mrs. She's Cooper? Going to doctor. She doctor? I'm thinking, you know, like, hanging with Mr. Cooper. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, go yeah. Dr. Cooper. She's the one that said Magneto was right. Yes. Yeah. She does the whole amazing speech at the end, but. Mr. Sinister tells her he's using Bastion. He's like, he's they've got Magneto tied up still. And they're in a, I'm using you off. Yes. Like, I'm using you. No, I'm using you. So they don't know who's using who. Mr. Sinister, to me, based on everything we've seen in this season, definitely feels like he's the one being used. Yes, but... But it did feel weird having Mr. Sinister feel like the guy reporting. Yeah. He, he was the assistant to the regional you manager. You think the guy. Bastion. You're like, oh, Bastion's the manager. He's Michael Scott's like, Mr. Sinister is going to pull Sinister shit. Well, say, Look up what Sinister means. It means bad. bad. He's Mr. Bad. Means well, bad. if you're reading the comic book <laughs> right now, Mr. Sinister is most certainly not in charge. Oh, well, it, you told us that yeah. where, you Just know, he only represented sinisters. one of four, right? Yeah. yeah. That's some gnarly oh, shit. Now it's one, even more. And one season. of them is a mutant. It's like a whole thing. We'll get oh, into that after mutant. the episode. I have a question about yeah, yeah, the <laughs> modern X Men stuff me. after the episode. Um, the reporter, Miss Tilby, comes to visit. Beast is doing his research on how many Sentinels could be out there. The Prime Sentinels. Oh. Um, Summer's family co- goes to visit Bastion's family home. His mom is there, just sitting there, welcomes him with open arms. She's like, "Ah, oh, they told me you would be here tomorrow," and she kind of seems like a nice lady at first. Yeah. I thought I got big time um, Ray Finkel's mom in Ace Ventura. <laughs> like, like, real sports, not huh? Like real Sentinels, not huh? Like yeah, stuffed yeah, Sentinels yeah, yeah. everywhere That's and robots reality. and shit. And I was, and then I found out very quickly, much more dangerous. The than house, Ray mom. it was dark enough where you're like, this just can't be going in a good no. position. It reminded me of. Did you guys watch Harry Potter much? Oh yeah, I, when, I saw the when movies. they go to. Um, I don't remember the town, but when they go find Dumbledore's house and his brother is there, and he's yeah. just like, what are you doing here? And it's, like, very clearly, like, dark and foggy. Bad yes. stuff. It's coming. Giving off bad vibes. Yeah. Like, yeah. if there was a video game, there would be a lot of health potions before <laughs> answering that, because <laughs> yeah. you know stuff was happening. Um, and Jean can see, if it was a video game, she would, like, press X to see memory on this painting. Sure. Um, she sees, like, yeah. the memories of Bastion through his drawings. And some of them are, like, fucked up sentinel drawings and yeah. stuff. Troubled kid, obviously. One of these scenes was an homage to Man of Steel. It was almost shot for shot, like um, Clark hearing voices in his head, mm. running into the closet, and then his mom being like, you're my son, I love you. Um, his father, Nimrod, they point that out. And at his lair, they cut back. He mentions to Dr. Doom and Genesi- er, uh, Doctor Doom and Zemo here, he's like, Genosha wasn't genocide. It's time management. He's like, it's going to happen. Zero tolerance, you know. You're just speeding things up. He's like, ah, it's the same thing with the environment. They, like, threw that in there. He's like, I don't believe in global warming either. It was uh, <laughs> the ozone line. He's yeah. like, the ozone stuff in the news. And I'm like, that was everywhere in the Al 90s. Gore, right? That's that was, like, was. that era. And I'm like, I, I actually, I think someone said recently, like, the ozone's fine now. It's like, oh, we fixed it. Oh, we the fixed ozone. it? The entire world is fucked. But, that like, can't the ozone's be true. Good, so that's <laughs> <good>. <laughs> yeah. um, but, yeah, the Bastion's mom quickly... She turns into like a crazy sentinel because she shows him the crazy sentinel artwork. She's like, "Oh, this was his best drawing ever. Bunch of sentinels and dead people." Just so it's murdering like, mutants. Okay, that, that was, was when he was awesome drawing, scene. you know, yeah. people with X's over their eyes as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, she turns into a sentinel. Whole town turns, whole into, town sentinel. turns whole town. into it. I love this that. is one of those things that would be very hard to do in live action. Yeah. We were talking about that last yeah. week yeah. when we saw the and first like human sentinel. This is a scene where I wasn't like when it happened I'm like I don't remember if this happens in the comic book <laughs> yeah so I was like I'm here for it like yeah. I was I was pleasantly surprised they begin to activate all over the world reporter Tilby who's in the room with Beast also a human sentinel we get a classic oh my stars and garters from Love heaven this, this classic Beast line when all the dots are turning on all the oh. dots and shit and he's like oh fuck there's <laughs> way more of these than anticipated and this is a good version I bring this up every episode but I'm saying it in a good way this is what I imagine it's like in Secret Invasion. It's like, how many of these yeah. fuckers are like, how many people that we think are friends are really And then immediately right just oh, that's so He's going people. in. He's swooning. <laughs> oh, man. It brings me back to just a golden era of Marvel right there. And then you go into, like, big action sequence with the Sentinels after all the X-Men. The X-Jet takes off. We see Juggernaut for a second. 
Um, the Sentinels gather outside the X-Mansion. They start to burn it down. Wolverine starts to get one of his big moments of not only the episode but the season. Yep. He starts slicing and dicing. He's brought up in the sky. Then he's dropped back down. They attempt to go after Rogue. Wolverine and Nightcrawler, one of the coolest tag teams of all time here. It's like nine, RVD and Kane or something. Nine Blades. Yeah, Nine, nine blades, blades, that was yeah. good. He's nine like, I got blades. six reasons, bub. He's yeah. like, no, you have nine. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> and Loved Wolverine that. enters that scene with, in the sky. Because we haven't had a, a, like a, a cool Wolverine real moment. Wolverine moment. And I put it, it was the ECW. Holy <laughs> shit. Holy yeah. shit. I, he's right. all ripped up. Like, he's yeah. his suit's ripped up I and shit. I rewound it to rewatch that Round scene. It was awesome. I was like, this is great. Also, seeing it. Wolverine get bamfed from his perspective, that. that was yeah, so cool. I wrote down... Cool. That was what I felt like on the Guardians of the Galaxy ride at Disney <laughs> when I was throwing up. I was like, oh, I don't know what's happening. I don't know where I'm going to end up at the end of this thing. We even got like the little Wolverines like, I got to talk to Hank about his taste of women. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And then he's just like, like slicing and dicing human beings. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know they are sentinels as well. That was kind of yeah. like, what the fuck is that going true, on? True, because Bastion, when he explains it, he's like, yeah, I take the humans. I turn them into sentinels. I send them out there. They have no memory of being here. So like. Innocent humans, kind of, yeah. yeah. True, yeah. They're re- Wolverine is, has, I'm a big fan of heroes. One of my favorite tropes is heroes not holding back for, like, yeah. epic moments. When they show off their power, like, what they're capable no of. No one's better at it. Like, when Superman doesn't hold back and when Spider-Man doesn't hold back are two of the best things I've in comic books. There are multiple scenes when in the comic books when Wolverine doesn't hold back, and it is gnarly <laughs> i thought they did that very well with spider-man and no way home at the end with goblin yeah when the peters have to stop him because he's not holding there's back that or when he's fights the kingpin in after civil war the first civil war comic when kingpin like there's like a what if where like what if kingpin doesn't um kills mary jane instead of aunt may oh. and kingpin is like fights peter parker and peter's like I've been holding back and just one punches and wow. kills him. Wow. In the heart. And, and Kingpin, like, they heart c- punch. it cuts to him, and Kingpin is like, oh, damn. And he just <laughs> down. I love that. Um, back to Sunspot and Jubilee. Mm-hmm. Weakest part of the episode, for sure. For sure. Arc. Yeah. Um, but I do like Sunspot, the character, and I was glad we got. We, I, I'm glad when he can. That we could see him fly. I was going to say, now. he can fly. Jubilee's like, ah, everyone can fly but us. And he's like, I got yeah, Got some bad that. news for you. I could also fly here. Um, and the Summer family have to drive a Porsche out of the Blackbird, which is crazy. Cable's like, you have a Porsche? He's like, I think mad that he's the son to rich parents or something. I, I yeah, he's probably, what the fuck? I <laughs> yeah. just could have had like a Porsche. I could have been in a Porsche family. So I was fighting for my life in the, in the dystopian future. <laughs> yeah. I actually put like, I can't believe there's not a sponsorship. And then the <laughs> next line was, it's a Porsche. I'm like, you fuckers always have a cover. <laughs> yeah. so. And they plow through that cave. He has a good line about like something I learned about the time travel. When you can't go back, you gotta go forward. <laughs> I felt, you know what it felt like. Uh, what's the name of the? We are the no. It's Meet the Millers. Or, uh, yeah. mm, it's a, that is Meet a the movie. Mitchells. Meet the Mitchells. Yeah, yeah good movie. That, that was I'm really not, good. That it's was really good. Movie. Is that yeah. the animated one? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, made by a lot of the Spider Verse team, so it's huh. got a similar like two D, three D kind of painted all right, feel. All right, I'll really watch it. underrated. Gene Gray coming through too with like the, it was like okay the the two guys are doing their things with their yeah. powers and then Gene just you know t- telepathy just moves them. Like I that. liked that Cyclops just shot her a look like take the wheel, babe. Yeah, and like exactly. went out off the top. Our G- boy Cyclops, he's getting laid. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, he was in some deep doo doo. A lot of it his his doing. This is when like we're gonna have another baby. Another <laughs> baby. Another baby. <laughs> Cable's gonna have a half sister. Whatever the fuck kind of crazy shit that timeline. Yeah. yeah. Quarter sister, three quarter sister. There is a Rachel. Summers. Yeah, there is. Is I'm, that so? Is that their daughter? That I don't remember. I oh, see. All right, now it's all coming <laughs> back to me. It's so complicated. I know the like, summer. What's up with the fucking this, summer's so family here's what tree? I'll say. Here's what it summer's is, family tree is like. It is. There's so like com- another cable. I think there's like a Nate Summers or something that is. Yeah, like out yeah, there. yeah, yeah. It, it there's cable all. Tw- I tweeted it. The other day, and there's like it's that character Joseph I was telling you guys yes, about. Yes, we brought that's, him up on we yeah, brought your tweet up on th- the episode. That's the clone thing, but there is a, a very meta, hilarious panel where I think it's Psylocke or something like, or it could have been Rogue, where it cuts to Joseph on the jet, and he's like, "So Cable is Cyclops' <laughs> son, 
with Madeline Pryor, who is a clone of Jean Grey, and then he's like, tr- he's trying to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then terrible. he goes, "Did I get that right?" And then Ro goes, "You forgot about his half sister." He's like, "What?" <laughs> like, so I tweeted it the other day, and it's very, it's very meta and very great. That's it sums good. up every. And I'm glad you guys are confused by it all. Yeah. Because this is how it was in the '90s. <laughs> we were confused about that, and we were very confused about Morph's powers last week when he oh, turned yeah. into Quicksilver. We were like. Wait, can he just turn into any superhero he wants and have their powers? Sort of. It's not just. It's just like a dumbed down. We read a Reddit post on the X Men ninety seven Reddit. Clem (laughs) sent me, and I was like, "All right, I understand a little bit." Just don't think too hard, because a lot of people are like, "We are." They're like, "What the fuck?" And everyone's like, "Just don't worry about it." He's kind of. He could do a couple powers. Yeah, Yeah, like Quicksilver was like right in his window. That that's a good one. He can nail. It's like an impression. Like he could really do that. Like uh, like we got the jug when he turned into the juggernaut. I was very excited. That was a good one. Talk about a messed up family tree. The, exa- oh, the f- juggernaut as well, tree. yeah. <laughs> juggernaut, uh, Cassandra. Cassandra. So Something we Legion. realized very recently: the fact that I know the Magneto helmet being like uh, Charles can't yeah. reach him was originally made for Juggernaut. Yes, I didn't realize that was like not the consensus main story in the comics until it was in the movie in two thousand. The Juggernaut helmet. Magneto? That Magneto's oh, yes, helmet correct, blocked correct. Charles. Yes. Which seems crazy to me because I said to Clem, like, the second they introduced that, what a no-brainer. 100%. The that's ju- how it should be. The Juggernaut's also not a mutant. People get that wrong. Yeah, that's he's all just, he's a- just jacked, No, right? well, he is a normal human that has that found a ruby in the jungle, and there is a demon in— I think it's Sidorak, honestly, because if you guys watched the Doctor Strange <laughs> Multiverse of Madness, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. They, I think it's America going fighting, but there's a, this the monster that— grabs her with yeah. the things yes and dr strange has used it when he was holding thanos like the red oh ropes. yeah when, yeah. when he those are called the yet. bands of sidorak who is one of the people claiming to be satan in the in, in the marvel un in the marvel comic book universe um and i think it's sidorak if anyone's watching you can correct me um he, sidorak gives juggernaut his powers where he is the unstoppable force but the caveat is he is an he's evil because yeah. he's gone good and his powers have been like halved, mm. and then I think in World War Hulk when he when Hulk t- comes back to like take over Earth and he's never been stronger, Juggernaut is a good guy and is not strong enough to fight the Hulk, Hulk fucks him up. because he's like halved and then, so he has a conversation with Sidorak. He's like, "I'll basically I'll I'll go back to being evil and stuff <laughs> if you give me my strength to fight the Hulk." And he almost beats the Hulk. Oh like, wow! Juggernaut and the Hulk. Juggernaut can fight the Hulk without his armor. For wow. sure, Juggernaut is a bad dude, but he's a. It would be like if you and me found a crystal in the in like the Amazon and then turned into the Juggernaut. That's the people, people would accuse us of being on steroids. A little probably. bit. If you turned <laughs> six, <laughs> they'd, have to, they'd have to add that to the banned substances. Yeah, list. yeah, yeah. Like, definitely. <laughs> he's an awesome. He's an Sunspot. awesome villain. Um, so Sunspot and Jubilee crash into his mother's gala that was set up previously. And then the Sentinels drop down, and they're like, they were trying to kill us. And the Sentinels like, we weren't trying to kill them. We're so lame. trying to, like, be cool. That with is them. the lamest part the of the The mom immediately so is lame. like, oh, then, yeah, listen to them, sweetie. They put fucking, like, cuffs around their necks and take them out in handcuffs. The good and the guys mom's are like, put cuffs around yeah, all right, hey, man, see ya. Your, your son was blown through glass. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> they're, he's, like, fucked up from battle. He's like, they're trying to kill me. And she's like, you look fine. Rub some dirt on it. It was kind of, like, scary. I, I, a lot of people are making this point, like, the fucked up shit in the real world, and then, like they said, like when there's someone like this, they meet it with apathy or whatever. And it's like, we're going to host yeah. a gala. We're going to have, like, you know, $100 plates of food. We'll sell some, like, rubber bands, like Lance Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. And we'll yeah. raise money they for that. They say Genosha. Yeah, <laughs> Genosha <laughs> relief. I, so in the comic books, uh, Cassandra Nova is the one that destroys Genosha. Oh, so shit. So I knew that only after the Genosha episode because when we saw the Watcher in the sky, some people were like, it was Cassandra Nova. No, I was like, can't be. why would she be floating in the sky, like her essence be floating in the sky like that? that it wouldn't make right. sense. It would be, but I hope she pops in. Are you going to watch Deadpool? Yeah. Because you know yeah. she's in there? Yeah. You saw about it, so yeah. Okay. I'll watch it because I'm not, a dead, I'm not the biggest Deadpool fan. I like, I'm a big Wolverine fan mm-hmm. and a lot of the things they're going to do in that movie, I liked in the comic books. So I mean, I'll, I'll just seeing out. Wolverine in the yellow suit. Yeah, that's like, honestly. Um, Gotta be there. Also, I've seen every X-Men movie. Like, the X-Men live action Do you movies, like them? I love X2. X2 is awesome. And we I talked about that first, on our And I love First Class, and I love Days of Future Past. Then we're pretty aligned with our yeah, X-Men We didn't even watch the last two. Phoenix and no, Apocalypse. Yeah, Apocalypse. Yeah, 
The scene in the in the <laughs> forest hurt, with Magneto hurt. and Apocalypse. It's great. That scene is incredible. Yeah. Pretty much the rest of the movie is. But bad. that's because those are two great actors. Oh yeah, Fastbender's amazing and as Magneto. Jer- Jer- who played uh James McAvoy as uh, Professor and X. Who played Apocalypse? Uh, Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac. Three just like juggernauts of a <laughs> nice. three juggernauts <laughs> of like an acting trio right there. Yeah. Um, also, somebody said it was rumored that a variant of Juggernaut will be in Deadpool and Wolverine. So I could see it. Variant? No. I could see it being the one from Deadpool two. I would imagine. Because yeah, apparently the X three guy said no. He said the suit was too much of a hassle. And then we, th- the more we thought about it, we were like, the guy's sixty. He just doesn't want to get into Juggernaut shape, or can't get into Juggernaut shape, yeah. which would be understandable. I hope it's the. Charles! Goddamn Charles! <laughs> I need that juggernaut variant. In De- and Deadpool would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like in um, in Robert. the Ninja Turtles movie when they use the the He-Man, what's up, Four Night yep. Blonde version. Uh, of the song. By the way, we were talking about that when people talked about Mutant Mayhem. Initially, I feel like it was talked about as if it was kind of a flop, yeah. that it didn't like perform. It was like the fourth most profitable movie of 2023. Really? It made a huh? net of $240 million. And no one knew it was out. Crazy. Everyone I talked to, you see Did you see it? Uh, movie, it's like, awesome. It's like incredible. Okay. It's the, the the most recent. One? Yeah. It, it's like it looks like. Uh, it's like kind of Spider Verse. Yeah, but yeah. The, the only thing I know about it is all the kids that played the Ninja Turtles all recorded their lines in the same room together, and they're all kids. The yeah. rest of the cast is like pretty famous, like huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post Malone, Seth Rogen, yeah. Paul Jackie Rudd, Chan. Jackie Chan. Yeah. Those just, kids are just unknowns. They were awesome. Yeah, I just – because they filmed Batman Animated Series. All the actors were in the same room. Yep. To, like, That's how they do Invincible yeah. as well. And it it, huh. it it does so well, and it's like – it's the way kids would act if they were like, how do New Yorkers act if I yeah. just watch right. on the internet kind right. of stuff. It's so, awesome. Right. And Check that out for sure. What? The soundtrack so, is a 10. Yeah. Oh, that's what I heard. Too. All so 90s Ninja hip-hop. Turtles, and what was the other movie? Mitchell's vs. the Machines. I'll watch yeah, that's that. what it was. Mitchell's vs. the Machines. Machines. I'll, yeah, I'll watch both of those next week. Honestly, they're both awesome. That Delightful works movies. Out perfect, too. Summers vs. the Machines. That's basically what that little scene is. Yeah. Summers is oh, that's trying to very, fuck some shit up. That's very funny. That's very funny. <laughs> um, so Bastion goes towards the end of the episode. He oversees the burnt-down X-Mansion. He's told Magneto is freed. He doesn't even really care. He tells Cooper uh, he was born that way when she calls him a monster. You know Shout what? out Lady Gaga. I'm going to do the meme. I'm just going to come out and say it. Bastion is kind of a dick. Oh, he's just a dick. Totally. Yeah, he he's is. a dick. He's a, he is he a dick. He is a super villain hellbent on genocide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's it's a dick. Way, he's uh, a dick. <laughs> Um, Cooper gives the speech on Genosha and what she saw in Genosha, and Magneto was right. She drops that in his face. That was a hell of a speech. That is a Magneto was right. Was real. That sentence, that line, was really big in the Grant Morrison X Men run. There's a kid. Isn't that sort of where they took the Thanos was right from? Sort of. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe. I mean, that that would make sense. But the I think it's Kid Omega, Quentin. Queen or whatever his name is is so the Grant Morrison one was like early 2000s and it's honestly one of my after the Claremont run it's probably my favorite run. I know, I feel like a lot of people Grant Morrison's legendary obviously but a lot of people consider those two the best like X writers right X writers yeah. well I mean Stan J- Stanley and Jack Kirby right? of course yeah the, they're the, the goat. like Jack Kirby is the definitive goat of Marvel everything um, but I like the Grant Morrison I also I'm a massive Frank Quietly fan, the the artist that did the first few. Anything he does, I'm just injected into my body. <laughs> um, where was I going with this? We were talking oh, Magneto about was Magneto. right. So um, Kid Omega was this – they did a really good job of highlighting students, and this is when Emma Frost was helping run oh. the, 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 the X-Men, and she had, like, a class of, like, telepaths. Like she taught the t- the the psychic telepath, because, and Quentin Quinn I think was his name was was like this nerdy dork, who I can't remember what happened, but then basically just turned into like a neo Nazi. Oh jeez. And like, but like, he started wearing a shirt to school that said Magneto was right, <laughs> and like yep. shaved his head to like look basically look like a yeah. Nazi, and had like his bully gang of like ex students. It was. <laughs> Actually, a, it's great. It's a great line. So I was gonna have the hashtag for the episode be Magneto is right. I'm you starting to feel that. like if we're associated nah. with that guy, nah, you yeah, can't. Yeah, do yeah, it. I don't know if we can do that. Especially, my mom's basement, staunch 
anti-Nazi podcast. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Staunch. Yes. Um, the most, it goes yes. without saying. Yes. We yes. are Indi- so anti-Nazi. Indiana Jones were like, we kick their asses yeah. and you whip those motherfuckers. Because it was, it was that, see, that's why it made Grand Morrison so great because obviously Magneto survived the Holocaust. Yep. And yeah. then Quentin Quinn basically became like a like he thought Magneto was right, but like took it to the extreme. Yeah. And Magneto would be like, hey, man, like. Chill out, dude. More. Relax. Yeah. Put yeah. this number up. Yeah. They focus on the number dude, two, which they great. I didn't realize they didn't do at all. They, the yeah, they no. really focused on it. And she, like, you could see Cooper's face was like, ah, oh, what am I doing here? Yeah. Yeah, and they said, like, what, was it her who said, like, the craziest thing was, like, no one was surprised. Yeah. It's like, again, it's like a lot of real world shit coming into it. And you're like, man, there is some, some fucked up stuff. Also, speaking of those Nazis who we hate. When fucking Sinister is like, oh, I knew many Dr. J- George. Oh, Mary. isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah. Yeah. He's a little Nazi pup. And it in is real cool. life. Yeah, and it's like crazy that like, and it's, it's, it's the cool thing about Sinister is he does have like all this experience and has seen history Huge play out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and then just fucking just Nazi pup just fucking. <laughs> yeah. the way. It's like, oh, dude, the X-Men is so good. Um, so good. <laughs> Magneto in his undies, he's in his Dr. Manhattan jockstrap, basically. He goes and goes to like the top of the world, sends shockwaves through the world, yeah. everything's powering down. This is where we see Spider Man, Silver Samurai, Omega Red. Um, and then Professor X returns home in front yeah. of Wolverine and Morph hits a to me my X Men. And that. there's there's a great meme because it's like Beast and uh, Gene and I think Storm. Cyclops and Storm. Someone's like, he just called the smart X Men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's even wearing glasses too yeah. to make him look extra smart. I yeah. love that. And he says, like, I hope I'm not too late. And it's like, mm, you're pretty fucking close to being Should've, too late, I mean, Charles. If you didn't go anywhere, we could have avoided You this. were pretty fucking yeah. close to being too late. But a great ending to the episode and a great, like, setting up the next two parts. We've got everyone together again. We've got yeah. Charles. Storm is going to come back because he called her. I wouldn't be surprised if she's just back by episode or part two. Um, sets up a, a fucking amazing next two finales, hopefully. We just got to, like, just put her back in. She she could, one line she gets to explain everything that happened. Before, Giant Bird yeah. was fucking with me. I met That's the, guy the, the adversary. The adversary. Yeah, yeah. An auth- a, a very underutilized villain in the comics. Good Always the comics? partnered with Forge? Mm, uh, Forge is the one. Oh, wow. That is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. He accessed like the main. Like, oh the main wow! Got so I believe this is what I, this is all off the top of my head. Um, Forge is in Vietnam, and he comes from like I don't know if it's a line. He has like some voodoo thing in his like. Lineage. I like that about him. That's a cool superhero. Yeah. Like you don't have a lot of voodoo superheroes. And he well, Forge can like create anything. Right? Yeah. But he had like his ancestry has some sort of mystic type thing, and he summons. The adversary. I can't remember why, but for at the reason the adversary is on Earth is directly because Forge summoned him, gotcha. and just yeah. never went back. And there is a great comic because there was a, an, a, it's right before AVX actually called Fear Itself, and there's a great, I think it's Journey into Mystery, like it's a single issue, but it's issue like 600 something, of Mephisto goes to a bar and is like explaining to this bartender like what hell really is. And it shows there is a throne in hell that Satan can claim, but Mephisto is not the real Satan, and it shows all of the, like, demons. The people claiming? It's basically the Avengers, but the demon <laughs> Avengers demons. Avengers Sounds demons. fucking metal. Not dark <laughs> Avengers, but, like, if you took every demonic villain and put them in a room, and they're all arguing why they're the top yep. demon. Yeah. So it had, like, Sidorak and the Adversary and Mephisto and Surtur and Dormammu and everything, Ooh. like, all arguing. It's great. But but the adver- but all those names are powerful, and the Adversary was in the room with them. He's getting the fucking invite. That's all you but he know. didn't look like that in the comic book. <laughs> I've seen, like, yeah, very different look in I the liked comics it. and stuff. I really liked it. Has the Adversary ever met Khonshu? Because that's what I said when I saw the adversary. I was like, these fucking I birds got to meet. I don't think mm. so. I'd like to see that, that in whatever gl- something. Wow, that's an excellent question that I don't know the answer to. That would be pretty cool. Also, how do you feel? You mentioned the Dark Avengers. How do you feel about this rumor that Thunderbolts, the MCU movie mm-hmm. Thunderbolts, has been renamed Thunderbolts Asterix? And they're like, we'll address that after the movie. The rumor is about that being a code name for them being the Dark Avengers. So like the Norman Osborn Dark Avengers? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I mean, that was a really 
Because Century is going to be involved in stuff, right? The, that's the, the huge rumor. It was this originally going to be Steven Yoon, and then he dropped out. I don't know if they've recasted it yet. There was rumors mm. about Henry Cavill in that role. Ooh. Um, but the team is like Yelena, yeah, it's um, all John the, Walker, it's Winter Soldier. Yeah. So the Thunderbolt. So it's interesting because the Thunderbolts in the comic book were like their own. That's like the Suicide Squad yep. of the and the Marvel comic books, and then after the Avengers and Norm after uh, Secret Invasion, when they made Norman Osborn in charge of the Avengers, he put together his own Avengers team, and it was the Thunderbolts mm-hmm. in new costumes. Interesting. So Venom became Spider Man. Huh. Bullseye became Hawkeye. I think Moonstone, who's a super villainous, became uh, Captain Marvel. Sentry stayed. Uh, uh, Ares, who is not anywhere near the MCU, basically just took – because Ares is Thor, Hercules. Ares. He is the god of war, gotcha. but he came to Earth to, like, be a superhero. Yeah. And he joins them, and it was a lot of fun because they invaded Asgard. I hate to admit it, Bob. Like, we're watching X-Men right now. It's like when you're nice and warm in the house and it's January. Hearing about Thunderbolts, it's like, that's when it's like, I got to go outside. <laughs> I'm going to have to like, sit in a cold car as the, as the engine gets warm. That's what it's thinking. Like, dealing with Marvel projects. Not everyone. Not yeah. everyone. Deadpool yeah. was, is going to be hopefully awesome. But, like, that, just, the Captain America movie. I'm it's just, just the about. Thunderbolt care. It's like, it's such a weird IP to kind of speak spearhead a phase it's especially when they it didn't feels like they're trying to do suicide squad with it i don't yes. i don't get it and but they don't have the level of villain if they had done this in the end game era yeah. i think they could have pulled it with, off with they're those doing villains with projects yeah. that suck and the, some of the villains kind of suck too. some of them but that being said if you have yelena and bucky as like and you're really leaning on them and hopper from uh, stranger things what's his name um, yes. Captain Russia. Yeah, we're basically right. doing LeBron and Mo Williams and like one other guy. Like, and then if you've got them to lead it, and then John Walker just being your fucking wild card, he might slice somebody's head off with a shield. If we go rated R. I'll yeah. <laughs> well, there's rumors about them going rated R with it. Is there? Okay. There are rumors might, about that. I and might be in. I'm pending in. Wyatt Russell, who plays John Walker, said his quote about the movie. They were like, "Oh, like, how do you feel about the Thunderbolts?" And he said, "I think it's time to fucking make a good Marvel movie." Oh, so I yes. think he's like getting out there and being like, Jose's like, I'm not, I'm not going to watch it. Like, I'll wait for it to hit Disney plus. <laughs> oh, by the way, I saw, um, someone mentioned to me, Madam Web is about to hit Netflix. I'm oh, definitely, God. I'll be there day one. Oh, day one. Day, 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 yeah, I, I said, I'll ban, I, uh, you know, I'll boycott the Sony movies in theaters. Cause I think they're ruining a bunch of great IP. Same thing with Craven, which just got delayed. It's supposed to be August. They pushed it to December. It's going to stink. Don't get your hopes up about it. It's when it hits Netflix too. though. Oh my God. I'll be there. Yep. Craven's right. Last Hunt would be a fantastic TV show. Well, well, it pisses me off because I feel like the MCU. I know a little bit about Craven's Last Hunt. The MCU Peter Parker right now seems like he's in a decent position for them to go forward with that, where he's kind of Maybe. more grounded New York. Maybe uh, Peter, Par- but they can't do it because Sony's Parker, ruining it. But IP. what makes Craven's Last Hunt so great is Peter Parker was married to Mary Jane during it. Ooh, so like, when yeah. Peter Parker like disappears for a week. She's like, she's like, where are you? And then yeah. she sees Spider-Man, and she's like, oh, what's up, Peter? And then, because for those of you who don't know, I'm sure, I don't know if you guys read it, but Craven quote-unquote, kills Spider-Man and buries him alive. But, like, basically tranquilizes him so he's dead for a week. He sleeps for a week and wakes up in a coffin. And then Craven takes Spider-Man's place and fights, like, fights crime, but is, like, is brutal. Brutal. So he's so Mary's like, oh, it's Peter, and then he's like snapping necks, and she's, she's like, like oh, and she's like, Peter. and she just goes, that's not Peter. <laughs> yeah. And then when when Peter Parker climbs out of the grave, instead of finding Craven, he goes right to Mary Jane. I had a I had a very Spider Man week actually. I, Love that. I read <laughs> Ultimate Spider Man one, kind of reread it. Me and Jose were talking about it. it's one of Jose's favorite books. He's talked about it on the show. Mm-hmm. So I reread that because I was sick, and I just pulled a comic off my shelf and said, I want to read a comic right now. And it retelling the origin made yeah. me want to watch the Toby Spider-Man. Because reading that scene, and I looked it up. I was like, oh, my God, this came out, like, the same year. Yeah. Um, reading the scene where he goes out and wrestles, and he's like, yeah. I want to be called, like, you know, the man spider or whatever. He's like, that spider, name's yeah. horrible. The amazing Spider-Man. That's <laughs> it. I wanted to watch that. And then you can't watch the first one without watching two. So I watched two the next day. The perfect Spider-Man movie. Perfect Spider-Man movie. Perfect it Spider-Man is A-plus perfect. 
Then the next day, I was like, all right, I should, maybe I'll give three a shot. It wasn't the perfect spot. There, are, there <laughs> are moments of three that I really Honestly, like. it reminded me of X3 in that, like, the whole first act, I was like, this ain't bad. And then it tanks. And then when they get into the Sandman was really the killer of Uncle Ben, like and that. they start... Yeah. That was all like, all right. And Venom wasn't great in it. The CGI, though, I kind of like the CGI of Venom. I didn't mind the big climactic battle between Spider-Man and Venom. Yeah, in the scaffolding yeah, and in the like construction I building. I think That's it, not bad. It's just Spider-Man. I kinda like the way he gets Venom off Eddie, too, when he like yeah. puts all the things yeah, and yeah. smacks it. I really, Spider-Man 1 has a soft spot in my heart yep. for being like the OG. like The first X-Men and the first Spider-Man, I think, are the two movies I've watched the most in my life. Oh, really? Wow. I watched the first X-Men every single Friday for a year when I was, <laughs> when I was, ten, when I was 10. Yeah. Same thing for first Spider-Man. I would double feature constantly yeah. to the point where if you played the first half a second of the first X-Men movie, I'd be like, we're watching X-Men. <laughs> I just immediately yeah, yeah, know what it is. The, so the, first the first one, the first, they're not great movies, but I have s the plus I had every action figure. I think they're, <laughs> so, they both hold up well enough where do. you're like, oh, this was a really good start to something. 100%. Yeah, and then 100%. both of them knock it out of the fucking park with the sequel. Oh, it's like, oh my god. Two. Dude, Sam Raimi oh. on the second Spider-Man movie was in his bag yeah. like to an insane level. The shot of Spider-Man swinging and then it comes and you realize it's in Doc Ock's sunglass eye and they just continue to fight off that. The fact that Spider-Man 2, they say like anyone could be a hero. Aunt May gives mm -hmm. that speech to Peter. And then everyone is a hero in that movie. Like all of the New Yorkers step up for Spider-Man mm -hmm. and the way they stick up for him when they see him without the mask on. Oh, I could go on and on about Spider-Man too. Perfect movie. Um, but what, what was, we, we said this last week, so just because you said that with watching it, what scene would you say you've watched the most out of any oh, movie yeah. ever? Do you know Ooh, the answer? In the first X-Men movie? In any movie. Any movie ever. We said I'd probably oh, watch Portals. Oh, wow. The yeah, portal the scene. portal scene in Endgame is like, Whoa, go back what and rewatch it once a month. What a that. question. What mo scene? Wow. Do you have do you have like a couple or even just one that you could say, I'll throw that on. Like I will go on in game, fast forward, fast forward, or I don't think you can even see Thor it. and Wakanda. Yeah, Thor and Wakanda was up there with Darth me. Vader, Rogue One. Yes, Darth Vader, Rogue People One. People put that in sure. the replies, that was a great show. Wow, what a question. I'll have to think about that. That is a fantastic question though. In any movie ever? Any I, movie yeah, ever. I, I was saying I'd watch Die Hard the most, so it's like, is Die Hard and just whatever scene I've happened to watch, that could be the answer, but I think I do seek out portals very, very I hard. think... I think it's going to be either the ending, when he gets out of the elevator in Fight Club, that whole, okay. oh, yeah, all the, the way to the thing's my blowing, um, the scene when they're driving the car and they accidentally shoot Marvin in the face in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I've seen the the gang fight in Anchorman one a lot. <laughs> that's, a that's a great. That's comedy a great comedy one. Actually yeah. a good, there's probably I've, yeah. I've right watched there. that Man, quite Step a bit. Man, brothers, like you touch my drum set, that would be up there for me. Comedies. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's, that's that might be one. way up there for what me. What were you too. doing? I was watching Cops, like that line. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> I would probably say, and then I watched, yeah, probably those t those, those first those two. Those are said, good ones. Out. But good ones. because I had them on my old PSP. You oh, file, yeah. Like the MP4 mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I would, like, be wa I just watch them. Yeah. Every day. They, they, uh, UHD? Is something that what they like call that. UMD something? Those DVDs? Something like, so yeah. probably the, those two scenes. For the original Star Wars trilogy, I was thinking about it after we talked about it. Luke looking out at the twin sons and that music hitting. Oh, that's yeah. a scene I'll go on YouTube and, and seek out just because it really? gives me chills every time to this day. And Yoda lifting the X-Wing out of the swamp on Dagobah. Another scene where yes. every time the score is so good it's for great. that that I'm like, oh, I, I could go back and rewatch that. I'll also rewatch the portal scene in Endgame. I did this after making the clip talking about it with crowd reaction. Oh, yeah. Crowd that reaction. You got like the incredible. opening night, people going, ah! <laughs> that's the I, best. In terms of the MCU, I've rewatched. I don't know why. I'm. S I like when, in, ba in Baku's introduction, a lot. Oh the yeah, Black Panther one. So good. Yeah. When it's like the subtle the snowy chanting. stuff. And yeah. No, not the the. Oh, when, when they when bring the, him out to fight. Yeah, when he challenges yes. for the the crown. I don't know why that scene is so, so enjoyable. So bright and so. Like, and it's like it's like a slow appealing. chant, and then it gets louder and louder, and then Baku's not the first one out. It's yeah. like all his henchmen, and they got the like masks big. on too, Love right? That. Yeah. 
Love that. That's a good one. MCU wise, the um the elevator fight in Winter Soldier is up there is for me. Not? Still haven't seen Winter Soldier. Whoa, the air? really? Never saw it. I understand it's the best. <laughs> Add it to I the totally, list. I Mitchell's will. Machines. <laughs> I totally understand. We'll it's, give you it's, all the list. I later. totally understand. It's, it's like the best. It's so good. The airport fight scene was up there for me too. Like In I, Civil I, War, I yeah. That a, a good amount because it was the first time you saw. All when those when that yeah. came out, yeah. especially yeah, yeah, before we got them fighting in other movies or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of some Star Wars stuff, this is technically the May the Fourth week episode. So oh, oh, happy yeah. May the Fourth. Um, if you're watching this on Saturday, The Phantom Menace, back in theaters, one day only, I will be going oh, to see it. bro, talk about scenes I've rewatched. Fa- uh, Maul's first, like, when Duel of Fates comes on. Dude, oh God. so I've never seen The Phantom Menace in theaters. I was one when it came out. I can't wait to go. You were one? I was one when it came Are out. Are we old? Right? <laughs> I, I'm old as shit. I, I saw that I, in theaters. I, Saturday morning, I'm going, I'm seeing the re-release, I'm hearing Duel of Fates. You know, in the speaker system for the first time, I'm going by myself, just alone. My girlfriend's out of town. It's gonna be a delightful. You wearing day. the helmet? N- maybe I'll wear I, the no, helmet. That's not Here's, the era, though. For it's the not. Helmet. It's a yeah, prequel, true, exactly. Yeah. If I had the uh, Anakin um, pod race helmet or the Naboo fighter pilot, maybe you give yourself a little braid and you go up with braid a robe would be or something. Nice. <laughs> well, that's the second one, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah true. He, well, he gets Anakin gets a little braid at the end. At of, the very uh, end, yeah, his, his little Jake his Lloyd. little Jedi. Outfit, Shout out Jake Lloyd. Shout out Jake Lloyd. Shout out Ron Howard, too, for being one of the only people there to defend them back in the day. Shout out Ray Park, who also played Toad, and we fucking hope. I hope he <laughs> I just wanted to, I just wanted I to get him going. Killed, but you're getting me into a frenzy. <laughs> I just wanted to poke him a bit. <laughs> he poked the bear. I had like a whole soliloquy on it last year. Yeah, I love like, that. If, they, if Ryan Reynolds cares about Marvel as much as I think, he's going to kill that fucking Toad the minute. And people are like, he played Darth Maul. I'm like, Darth Maul is cool, but fuck Toad. He also played Snake Eyes. Oh, did oh, he in really? G.I. Joe? Yeah, G.I. Joe. Oh, wow. That makes sense for the acrobatics and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. He could do flips like nobody else. I can still feel the, p- the pit of disappointment in my stomach leaving the theater. I was like, <laughs> I was like, what the How fuck old were you for that? Phantom Menace? Were you young enough where you kind of liked it? So that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. You must have liked Dude, it. I was so into it. Yeah. And I, I understand, like, retroactively, I understand why people hate it. But Darth Maul was the coolest person awesome. that ever lived. The scene when they, the, the first fight, when he has like the one and they fight in the desert, he comes yeah. after Anakin. And he just shows up and there's just, and Qui Gon just fights him. There's no so talk. Awesome. Yeah, it's just like, there's no, go. who are you? It's he's on like, site. He just goes, Anakin, <laughs> get down. I'm like, he doesn't even, that could be a good guy. Yeah, but we, like, it's we weren't breaking down like YouTube videos we're like, oh, no. this this is the villain. Like, we're just like, what the fuck? It's dark. It's in the desert. Like, it was terrifying. Yeah, yeah. I was a, I was a big Pod Racer fan. I was a big Maul fan. I loved Binks as a kid. I thought Jar Jar Binks was I the was funniest like fucking guy in the world. I didn't hate him. I didn't like him. I was like, he just. Oh, he's I there. loved him. I loved the thing he wrote on Naboo at the end. Those like oh, things yeah. with the long mm. legs and stuff. I liked the. Uh, I loved that fight at the end where they're throwing water balloons at the fucking droids. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I liked the underwater scene with the giant fish. I thought that was so cool. I would always jump into my pool with like I would have something <laughs> in my mouth, you know, pretending it was the Jedi breathing yep. thing. I had the action figures of Qui Gon and Obi Wan. With those in their mouth is the same mold, that. except they just like put a little black thing in their mouth. I love that. I had the big fish, you know, where there's always oh, a bigger fish. Yep. I had so many of the toys. It's it. I was Darth- like you, like it holds such a special place. My I, heart. I, I understand. I was Darth Not Maul great. for Halloween back to back years. Wow. Were you? Back to back <laughs> yeah. uh, we worked with Fran. She was like Padme. Padme for like seven years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Prequel like, Fran. I I get why people hate <laughs> right. it, but like sometimes you just want to have a fun time with your kid. And yeah. it, it makes me feel so nostalgic Dude, because I would rerun so that VHS more than any other. Like was, at my grandma specifically, God bless my grandma Fox for <laughs> watching that so many times. It's like arguably one of the worst Star Wars movies. I'm sure she would have rather been watching Empire if anything. But yeah, I would just rewatch Phantom Menace over and over. And again. I like I've grown to understand like watching it through a kid's eyes or thinking about watching. I'm like, oh yeah, like pod racing would be fucking awesome. If I, but I was what was it, ninety eight? Yeah. I was sixteen fucking years old, and it's like. And and you're probably sitting there like, why are they talking about taxes right now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I'm kind of understand. I'm like, I know what they're talking. I learned this yeah. in like school. Like this trade week. federation like, route. Why the fuck do we give a shit? Like. They glossed. That would be in the 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 the, the crawl, yeah. and then the crawl just they kept bringing it up, and it was like we're talking taxes for the third time this hour. They yes. burn their I've got a bad feeling about this. Like thirty seconds into yeah. the movie, they're like, run run the line, people like we don't know what we're doing next. Yeah, and yeah. Again, that line that George says, or like I might have went a little far with but, this or whatever. <laughs> yeah. like, I, at least and I know the, in his heart he knew. And the marketing for that, 
is makes me like when they. Oh my god! You, you you remember when any soda machine you saw, yeah. it was like Mountain Dew, but had Qui Gon, or yeah. had like yeah. Pepsi and like Obi Wan, or like Wano. whatever, or exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then the poster that they came out of Anakin with oh, the shadow. I, I got the goose, I'm just saying. It was, the best. It was, I'm thinking, this movie is one-tenth as good as that One poster. of the best movie We're posters good. ever, not just Star Wars. Like, that's yeah. one of the best movie posters. One of the best teases ever. Because yeah. even when I was eight, I'm like, oh, I knew exactly what that the was. The original like. trailer, every saga has a beginning. Yep. That's so good. They were. I remember, I'm sure, Clem, you remember this. People would go to the movies – because the internet didn't exist. So the only way you could get trailers was movie yeah, theaters. Yeah. People would buy a ticket, go to the movie, see the trailer, and then leave. Yep. <laughs> I got to know what movie Well, the it Acolyte, was that, they're kind of doing that, that too. that. Because I remember there was a movie, and it was like, they have the fir- they're the first ones with the trailer, and people were going and leaving. Yeah. That That's was part of the point. reason some people are going to see The Phantom Menace, kind of myself included, on Saturday. They're putting an Acolyte trailer exclusive to Whoa, May really? 4th. Whoa, that's smart. I Whoa, think really? at the end, I believe. That would be much smarter than they're like. They're like, we're making sure you stay for this movie, motherfucker. I, I imagine, <laughs> but I'm excited for it. The like the Alamos and of the world, yep. they're gonna have some cool pre shows and like. That's a nice little feature. Not just we're putting this movie back out that you've seen, but we're putting this movie out and we're also giving you a little thing. Yeah. I also saw there's an R2 popcorn bucket. Love that. It's fifty dollars, but it comes. It's large popcorn and a drink included, which is probably like twenty or thirty as yeah. it is. If my theater has the R2 bucket, they might be pulling my arm. I might be having to buy it. Please don't tell me you can fuck it. <laughs> I don't please, think you can fuck like it. Because, like, my sweet R2. <laughs> it ain't like the Dune bucket, yeah, no. Yeah, like, I don't want any of his little, like, But I think it's popcorn cold, and yeah. drink. I think you put the drink in the top that's and the cool. popcorn in the that's, belly. That's fun. Which I have would the, be cool. I have the Robert Pattinson Batman bucket, the head. I don't know oh, yeah. yeah. And then I have uh, Gwen, Spider-Gwen from uh, Into the Spider-Verse. I have, it's not like a fancy bucket, but I still have the fancy tin from Endgame Night. I'll always keep oh, that that's one. A good one. If you watch normally in my mom's basement episodes, it's behind me in the office. I have. I actually saw Endgame at midnight. Oh, you did. You that was big enough, enough where you yeah. were like, "I'll, I'll show saw, up for this." Here one. are the Marvel movies I've seen at midnight: Endgame, the first Ghost Rider. Wow. With Nicolas Cage. Yeah, yeah you're cool. Well, you own every issue. That we is my about all-time that. favorite yeah. hero, and I knew it was going to be bad going in. I'm like, <laughs> don't care. And I, fun fact: I owned that one on PSP. Swear to God. The first Ghost I Rider movie. That. I yeah. absolutely love that. And Doctor Strange. Oh that. yeah. Because I'm a big Doctor Strange guy. The, that one I was pleasantly. I didn't. I went in with pretty low expectations, and I actually enjoyed it. I remember I not it. really wanting to see the first Doctor Strange. My friend Dom, shout out Dom, bought us shout tickets Dom. and was like, "I know you're gonna like this." We went and I loved it. When I saw Endgame, what? Yeah, it was Endgame. There was a guy who was outside. You remember they did like a marathon where you could watch every Marvel. Oh, yeah. Movie. It was like a two, like a. 24, 36 hour marathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We leave the theater after seeing it being like, holy fuck, holy fuck. And this guy's smoking a cigarette. He's like, you just leave Endgame? I'm like, yeah. He's like, did you see? He's like, no, I'm in the marathon right now. It was like Thor 2. He's like, I'm just going <laughs> to grab a cigarette during Thor 2. And I was like, dude, I was like, what you're doing is by far the best experience. I was like, it's going to suck yeah. probably in the next five, you know, five movies. But like, when you get to the end of Endgame, you're like, holy, like, I couldn't imagine. It was I awesome know. enough was awesome. just seeing it on its own, but going through that whole They're doing journey. that. On May the fourth as well, a Star Wars marathon. You so can buy tickets. Nine movies. Yeah, and it's like twenty three hours. Wait, or nine something? or like the eleven or twelve. Like are we getting nine. solo? Okay, good. just the Skywalker saga. Okay. Is it in chronological order? I was gonna say they're doing it in, I believe, yet yeah, chronological. So episode. So Phantom Menace is first. They're ending. Yeah, and they're ending. You Return with, of the Jedi. Uh, oh no, Rise of Skywalker. Uh, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, which is like wow, that is a grind. Some people, I'm sure, will just like go for the middle. And go see the original no, three or something, you know, like <laughs> show up for the middle. I actually had a funny exchange with a guy at FedEx right up the block. I found like a few, um, I had like a, an old Kiss autograph that I wanted to send to my nephew. So I packaged it up in cardboard, brought it to FedEx. I was wearing a Return of the Jedi shirt. Been wearing a different Star Wars shirt every day this week. It's kind of, you know, May the fourth week. It's kind of <laughs> thing. And the guy says, great movie. I'm about to show it to my girlfriend for the first time. He goes, I showed her four, five, one, two, three, and we're about to watch six. So I go, oh, the machete order. And he goes, what? I was like, oh, they call that the machete order. And he seemed so offended by this. The FedEx guy goes, why would they say that? And I was like, because you chop it up. Machete, you chop it up. And he was like, oh. I was like, all right, see you, guy. Like, oh, that was man, the, that was the really end of our conversation. Soured the conversation by bringing up 
the name of the order in which he watched the movies. How to dare watch you? those how, movies how dare, how dare and you? not know it's the machete order. How I was dare like, you, have fun. you just watch four, five, one, two, three, six for fun. Nobody told you to do that. That's wild. Wild. But he said he wanted to end her with a happy ending, which I sort of understood. I maybe that. like his family got killed by machetes. Or something. I'm trying to think. Like, what <laughs> he was. You, he, maybe you maybe you don't say that word at a FedEx. It's a government building or something he, like. I don't know. You didn't say UPS. Amazon feels like that's a bad word to them yeah. because Amazon doesn't it's like use machete FedEx. Machete really. Why would they say that? That's huh. what he said. It was like How dare they chop it up. Me. They chop How it up. You. Come on. All right. That, that's the hashtag for, for this week. Hashtag chop it up. Hashtag chop hashtag, it up. <laughs> hashtag chop. Because the summer's timeline is chopped up. There Boom, look at that. All tied together. It's like poetry. It rhymes, it rhymes. As, as George Lucas would say. Also, I wanted to shout out, if anyone's going to see The Phantom Menace this weekend, or even if you're not going to see The Phantom Menace, and you haven't seen the documentary about the making of that movie, oh, yeah. must watch. It's because great. it comes off like a documentary about what went wrong in that movie. Like, they don't pull their punches. And it has that clip Clem's talking about where George watches the movie for the first time, and he's like, I think I went a bit too far in a few places. And, like, Rick McCallum, the producer, is sitting there, and he's like, oh, God. Like, they realize it's not going to be beloved like the original trilogy was. And they had it if they just made Jar Jar Darth Jar Jar in episode two. <laughs> fucked it all up. But you'll they also appreciate some of the movie because they went through a lot of challenges. They went through a storm like the original yeah. did, like a sandstorm and shit. And you see some of the original pod racing stuff, and you're like, no, I understand the thought behind why this would be awesome. In a new age, and it just didn't, you know, all click didn't for people. Translate. But as me and Jose can attest to, the newest generation has come around, and the Phantom Menace kind of has a new narrative around it. That's fine. I, again, <laughs> you can make a case. I, I don't want to do it on the pod. We're friends. Like, there's more bad movies than good movies in this guy. We're not going to make that. We're not going to do that. Not during the pro star. Week. Yeah, this is like Certainly you can't not. say that. This is a religious wow, like thing. A, you can't say that line. this week. <laughs> what a <laughs> line! Gonna, I was gonna kick my don't, no, I'm just never don't think about. too much about that, Jose. Don't start doing the math in your head. I don't want you to do that. Um, Jose, thank you for coming in. Time boss. No, I gotta ask first. Oh yeah, I gotta ask. I mean, both of you guys' opinions on this. Do we see, like, come my X Men or whatever he says, and like. Five of them are like, I'm going to go with the guy who actually was fighting for Magneto? So, oh, a splintered team? Like gonna Here's team. what's going to happen. Well, I don't know what's going to happen, but in the comic books. See, you guys... you I can't remember which one of you said that, but you guys were talking about how someone... Uh, yeah, Scott said, like, oh, Professor X never taught me how to be a yeah. dad. And yeah, this yeah. That. There's a very infamous scene in the comic books where Scott goes... Like, Cyclops leaves the X-Men to go live with Madeline and raise Nathan... In Alaska, because he loses a hand-to-hand combat, like trial by combat, who will lead the X-Men against a depowered Storm, and Whoa. Storm wins Whoa. and takes over as leader of the X-Men. And Cyclops goes, you know what? Fair play. I'm gonna go raise my kid. But like the whole time, he's just kind of aggro and yeah. angsty and just like bah. And then he gets a message that's like, we found the real gene. And then he just abandons. Madeline and his oh. kid. Just it's that's why it's infamous. It's because yeah. he just gets up and leaves. Yeah, and you want to like this guy. And the paneling, like if you Google That'd it, be like, that a hundred percent. Fuck. And then he goes and starts his own X Men team with like uh, with like his various other X Men, former yeah. X Men. I think it's X Factor. I believe that's how X Factor starts. So there are two teams, hmm. and then Excalibur is the British X Men. Nerdy as hell to use yeah. Excalibur. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, guys. And then there's Ecstatics, which is just a very quirky team. If if you like Wes Anderson, you probably oh. like Ecstatics. Ah, like interesting it's just comparison. A very yeah. goofy, odd, drawn thing. Like Andre Feely loved. Oh yeah, Ecstatics, UFC like fighter. Kind of thing. Oh really? X this Force. guy whose name is Andre Feely. That's his name. His nickname? Touchy. 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 Andre Nose Touchy Feely. Is Shout out Megan O'Levy. She came up with that. 100%. And Feely is on level with my knowledge. Yeah, really? He's, he's yeah. crazy. When they get together, like, they could <laughs> shut down a press conference. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's great. <laughs> like, we, like, the comic book store I took you to in Vegas, yeah. I went with Feely, and we just dropped too much money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go to... They walk in, the owner goes, cha-ching. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> I, like, I probably, we probably shouldn't do the Jose, but I was like, we got to go to Midtown. Come, and it's, I, I'm always down. You got the you got the one with the rogue and the, you know, the... the oh, yeah. One. Oh, I can give that to you today. I think oh, it's yeah, in the it's office. Beautiful. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm, I, got, I think I'm just going to buy the, the, the famous ones. The Wolverine getting crucified, Magneto trial, yeah. 
the Days of Future Past. I mean, I'm not going to. You're not it, it, very, Days of Future Past. The issue is going to be behind glass. Oh, so oh yeah, I will not be buying that one. <laughs> <laughs> there are Days of Future Past, the uh, Dark Phoenix Saga, all any of the Jack Kirby X Men, any of the Jim Lee issue one, the originals, yeah. the Gambit and Rogue hugging panel uh, from that X Men, the Jim Lee X Men are all going to be behind glass. I'm going to have to get the reprints. I think that's going to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get the reprints. I have to go in my attic because I know I had. I think I have the It'd number one. It'd be fun to reprint. flip through those, yeah. Yeah, it would be cool. You you could probably find the original grouping of Weapon X for like fifty bucks. Really? Yeah, like that's Wolverine's origin. Yeah, um, you could probably find that pretty easily. There's some sick fucking covers when he has the claws so out. So many of those. That's covers the are Frank sick. Miller. I I really want that to be a show. Oh, I the want Frank a Miller Wolverine. Of just Wolverine they in Japan. They did a little yeah. bit of that in the Wolverine, and the stuff that they it. pulled. I, I liked it. the stuff that they pulled, like him running on the. Rooftops of that's like a bonsai place. Yes, that's that great. was sick. If they when they did the samurai at the end of that one, oh, I so was bad. hoping when they when they showed Silver Samurai in the that montage yep. of like everything, I was hoping that was like, oh, we're gonna go this to route because I because Wolverine's obviously not being utilized, which yeah. I think is a breath of fresh air. Totally, like to get because like Nightcrawler says, like it's always about Wolverine. Fair enough. If if they're not using him to save all that for like a linear show where he's in Japan, I'm. I am so here for it. That'd be sick. Yeah. All right. I have to also add this oh, one yeah. in real quick. To anyone, God, God bless you if you made it this far. Um, there was – Bodomeo had tweeted out, yes. I think, some of the different issues to like – Oh, yeah. Parable. I wrote yeah, that yeah. down as well. Fatal Attractions. He said the, the storyline, Fatal Attractions, it was Uncanny X-Men 304. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this guy knows it's a, I am not gonna give anything away. He said that is the one to look yeah, back on is. for the next couple episodes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh yes. right. wow, I'm really excited now. All right, good. Wait, what was it called? Fatal, Fatal Attractions. Attractions. Issue 304. Issue is that 304. The one with the cards with the, that's not the one with the cards. Uh, I don't remember this. I don't remember the cover, but the um the there were some shows from season one. The final decision, uh, season four, episodes one and two. One man's worth. Part one and two, season four, episode six and seven, Sanctuary. Uh, part one and two, and then season five, episode twelve, Descent. Those are I'm I'm sure like the previous Ian is gonna run through this. He's like, watch those. The You're cover. gonna need those mm-hmm. kind of. Yes, I had I love those. They had the the little card in there. All the cards, like the holographic Every single type one. thing. Yeah, there was a whole run of them with the cards. I have I had them all. Um, one of those gimmicky '90s things, right? Yes. Like a chrome well, cover, a, co- I, a card. I couldn't like, wait to get my Tuesday wait, comic run. I have this guy I bought my son the yeah. toy. That's uh, Apocalypse Warps Angel. So when Apocalypse captures Angel and makes his four horsemen of the apocalypse, he's dead. That's sick. Uh, metal. God. Metal. <laughs> That's metal. So these are all again, if you if you read his tweet, uh, these are the ones to rewatch. But our boy Heavy Spoilers, at the end of this week's video, he does like a five minute this is what happened. Perfect. Just do that. Yeah. Don't go back and rewatch like Save you a lot of time. eight episodes. Yeah, yeah. That's smart. Dude, I, I know. fucking love it. I know. Oh, we're going to nerd so out this big time. All right. Tune in next week. We'll be talking uh, Tolerance is Extinction Part 2.